Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I will be painting a holy branch. These are usually used as accents with other plants. The shapes of the leaves are not the easiest to paint, but let's break it down like usual to understand the shapes. The base shape of the leaf is the same as any other, but these leaves, as you know, has pointy tips, so you can always draw it around an ordinary leaf shape as guide to create those curves and tips. If this is a bit difficult, you can draw it out a few times with the leaf guide, then try to draw it out without the guide, and after you're used to that, then try to also bend the midrib to help you create curvy leaves so you can vary the shape slightly. If you're already comfortable with that, you can also start adding folds. Here I'll just draw a few examples, but I'm only going to paint them loosely so I'm not really too worried about including too much detail so I won't be painting the folds but feel free to add them for details if you would like to. For me personally I just like to vary the angles or the shape slightly and again I'm going to paint them loosely and quickly so some of those edges does not have to be as even or as clean as how I've drawn them out here. The berries are very simple to draw and paint. They are basically just circles and I like to paint them both in clusters or just as single berries. Sometimes the single berries are just there to fill in those awkward spaces. I like to add a dot at the tip to give your eyes an idea of where the berries are facing and the stems which are attached to the berries are very thin compared to the branch. To draw the branch, I like to add jagged lines like I usually do. Technically, from what I've seen in photos and pictures, the branches are actually quite smooth. But personally, I like to add those edges. I just think that it guides me a bit more with the placement of the leaves and berries. And I basically try to attach them to those protruding points. But this is up to your preference and once you have the main shape of the branch, you can just try to add the leaves and the berries together to fill in those space. Personally, I like to draw out a few of these branches before trying to paint it. So I get an idea of how I would like to lay out the branch, especially if you're painting this to create a Christmas card with a limited space. You might want to figure out a solid idea of the composition before painting it out. I like to also place some of the berries or the leaves on top of the branch. This way you're creating a bit more depth through the layers. So now I'm going to go over the colors and the colors are Vermilion by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Ivory Black by Holbein, Ultramarine Deep by Holbein, Hooker Screen by Cotman, Permanent Green 2 by Holbein, Permanent Yellow Deep by Holbein, and White Gouache by Windsor & Newton. These are just the colors that I chose but you could also use other shades. I personally felt like these colors give a nice warm vintage feel after painting it a few times which is what I'm looking for but you can always adjust the shades to suit the feel for the painting that you're going for. The first thing I'm going to do here is paint the branch and the color that I'm mixing here is permanent green, permanent yellow deep and burnt umber. I'm mixing them together and I'm using a very thin consistency because I want this to just act as a guide so I can place the berries and the leaves but I'm painting it lightly so if I want to paint the berries on top those branches won't be too much of a distraction. The branch that I painted here is also fairly thin because personally I would like it to look more dainty and I can always add on to the branch to make it thicker at the end. With the berries, I'm using the color vermilion 
and I'm using a medium consistency to a thick consistency so the berries are going to stand out. I want the red to be quite vibrant and this way I don't have to keep layering it when I know that I want it to be saturated. I'm keeping a tiny bit of space whenever I want to add the berries next to each other and if it's slightly overlapping. This way the paint won't mingle with each other and you'll have separate shapes to give the painting more of a lighter feel. And as I'm spreading out the berries, I like to vary the amount of berries in the cluster, just like how I drew it out before. And on top of that, I like to also vary the size to keep it nice and natural, but the main size will be the most dominant. Once I've painted a few of these berries down, I'm going to add Quin Red to the Vermilion to create a slightly different tone of red and I'm going to paint it behind the existing berries that I just painted. I just find that this slight adjustment of the tone of red is an easy way for you to separate those circles if you want to place them behind one another and I also like to add them in random places if I feel like some areas are a bit too empty still. Next I moved on to paint the tiny stems to attach the berries to the branch and for this I used a mixture of ivory black and burnt umber but I also took some of the green mixture with the permanent yellow deep to keep the brown still within the same tone of green that I'm going to use for the leaves. So now for the leaves, as you can tell, I took some of the brown from the stems and I added it to the green mixture and this way, again, I'm keeping the same tone for the leaves. For this, the way I paint it is by just outlining it the same way as how I drew it out before. But now I'm filling up the color with the rest of the paint that I have from my brush. So this is a very easy way to approach weird shapes for leaves because while the paint is still wet, even if you draw the outline separately before coloring in the leaves, the paint will still blend nicely together and you won't be able to see any separation from the outline and the color. At this point, I'm just going to scatter the leaves around the berries and the branch that I've painted. It's also good to paint some leaves on top of the branch to give a bit more sense of depth like what we did with the berries and that way you're just layering more items so it doesn't look too flat. I'm not trying to make it full at this point because I will paint the leaves again with a different shade of green which is what I'm about to do here but for the first green I just want them to be evenly distributed all across the branch. For this next tone of green I'm mixing in Hooker's Green with Ultramarine Deep and that's going to be the next base color for the green but again to keep the color even all across I added a little bit of ivory black to mute it slightly and after that I also added some burnt umber with a bit of the previous green mixture so you can see that I'm adding a lot of different colors together and I'm almost using the same colors as what I used for the branch and the previous leaves but I'm just changing up the ratios in order to create different shades. If the dominant color is different and you add less amounts of the different mixture you'll have something that's similar in terms of temperature and tone but you're going to come up with a different green color just because the dominant color that you're using is different to the previous one. I'm sorry for rambling too much about this but hopefully that makes sense and I actually don't mind if the colors are a bit blue or a bit muted or dark at this point because I actually like to vary the colors slightly to keep it natural and I also don't mind if some of the leaves are painted in a thicker consistency or in a lighter consistency but I'm not going to go too light at this point because I'm going to use the lightest consistency later to fill in some additional spaces or if I have any awkward spaces to fill.
From here I feel like I have a good distribution of the leaves and berries all across the branch and you can always add more like what I'm doing here with the berries. You can always go back and forth on the steps whenever you paint because a lot of times once you've added a new element or move on to the next step, the previous might need some further adjustment. But once I'm fairly happy with the placement, I'm going to add a bit of shadows for the berries to give it some form and volume. For the shadow of the berries, I added Quin Red to the vermilion that I had on my palette. I also added some Burnt Umber to darken the red. For some of my trials, I tried adding a little bit of Ivory Black, but I just find that the black is a bit too dominant for my liking and I lost the warmth of the painting that I'm going for. So I just stuck with the Burnt Umber, Quin Red and Vermilion. And whenever I need to layer the darker tone of red for the edges, I like to use either a thicker consistency or add more burnt umber into the mixture to darken it slightly. But if you like the look of mixing ivory black, which is also a possibility, you can always do that. Now I'm going to add the little dot at the end of each of the berries and for this I'm mixing Burnt Umber, Ivory Black and Quin Red. Again I'm adding the Quin Red and Burnt Umber to give more warmth to the Ivory Black. And here you can see me going back to paint in more leaves this time in a lighter consistency so I can fill in some of the spaces that I find is looking a bit too empty. Next here I'm going to add a bit more detail to the branch so you'll see me taking some of the green mixture that I had in my palette, mixing it with the brown and also the black for the tip of the berries and I'm just going to repaint the branch because I think I have a good distribution of the leaves and the berries at this point so now I can paint those branches in a thicker consistency while also avoiding some of the berries and the leaves which are placed on top of the branch. This is also a good opportunity for me to thicken the branch if I want it to be a bit thicker than what I initially painted. Here I also added a bit of a darker tone by just adding a bit more ivory black and more burnt umber into the mixture and also using a thicker consistency. I'm placing this in some of the edges but I still left out some of the base color so there's a difference in value. Next I'm going to be adding the details of the leaves by adding shadows as well as the midrib and veins and I'm just going to paint them as how I've drawn them out before. Even if I'm thinking about adding thicker shadows, I always try to follow the direction of those lines and try to sometimes create negative shapes. As for the color of the green, I used whatever I had left on my palette. I find that this is a good chance to use up what I have left, so I don't waste as much paint if I were to keep cleaning and mixing new colors. I guess this is also why it's great to use similar colors for the mixtures so the shadows will still be the same tone as the base colors also. You'll see me varying the details here. Some I add thicker lines, some I add very thin lines, and some I just add the midrib whereas others I might color the full leaf while leaving a negative space for the detail of the veins. So just play around with whatever you're comfortable with here. This is a loose painting so the detail of the leaves won't be overly too visible, they're just acting as suggestion for your eyes.
With the green that I had left on my palette, I also used a very thin consistency of it to paint some light reflection from the leaves to the berries and I just feel that this will give a better consistency of color all across the painting. And of course, as I mentioned before, you can always go back to the previous steps here. I'm just going to add more berries and some of those empty spaces. This next step is optional, but I personally like to mix in different leaf textures. So I decided to add some pine leaves to fill in some of those empty areas. I personally find that the holly leaves themselves can look a bit too harsh because they're very pointy so I decided to add those pine leaves to slightly soften the leaves. Again I used whatever green I had left on my palette and I'm painting the leaves very lightly and loosely so they don't distract from the main holly branch. For the last step, I like to use my white gouache which I'm reactivating here and I'm going to use my small brush to first paint more leaf details very thinly. I'm using a very dry brush consistency. It's so dry that when I paint the lines, sometimes the paint doesn't come out smoothly and I can also keep the tip of my brush very sharp this way. And after I'm done with the leaves, I am also going to add some highlights and shine for the berries, but for that I will use a looser consistency, but the white should still be opaque so the paint is easier to glide on paper and the white is visible on top of the red. So that's basically the last step for this painting. You can paint this branch as an artwork or you can also turn this into another Christmas card design. I know it's a little late for some of you to create Christmas cards and I thought that since not too long ago I got a coffee page upgrade to gold and with that I'm able to set up a shop, I decided to list digital copies of my Christmas card designs including the design with this holly branch so you can purchase the digital copy and print out these cards in case you need some last minute Christmas cards. So that's it for this tutorial. Like usual, the tools that I used, my social media links as well as the link to my coffee page will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!